everyone, and welcome to the 6.5 Summit, AI Unleashed. I'm Melody Brew with more insights and strategy. Today, I'm joined by Kira McEgon, President and Chief Operating Officer at Ring Central for a spotlight on collaboration. How are you, Kira? Good, how are you? Good, I'm so glad for you to join us today. So Thank let's get into this. As AI continues to transform enterprise communications, we're seeing a shift from basic automation to more advanced agentic AI that can understand context, intent, and even emotion, especially with voice interactions. With this evolution, how do you see the role of AI further developing within enterprise communications over, I guess, the next few years? And where do you think the biggest opportunities and or challenges lie? This is a, a great question as we're sort of at this huge inflection point um, in enterprise or AI. I think everyone is seeing that. And uh, we're moving fast. We're moving faster than we've ever moved from basic automation to agentic AI, which takes action on your behalf, which really is your um, right hand, left hand, and all of the helpers that you've ever needed. So think of agentic AI as your trusted digital employee, able to understand, reason, and act across every phase of business interaction. And it's never been done before. So the uh, question is, what really makes it agentic? And why is it effective? It's effective because it, it likes at the heart of interpreting the intelligence, and especially when it comes to voice. Here at Central, we believe that voice intelligence is the richest and most nuanced form of communication data and is the foundational element um, in the future of agentic AI platforms. Voice is where emotion, urgency, and intent live. And uh, just to quote some research data from Stanford University, uh, which found that voice conveys like over 38% more emotional information than text-based communication alone. Uh, additional data point to support this is from IDC that says, 85% of enterprise communications involve voice at some point in their customer journey. So doubling down on voice and what it holds, it holds multidimensional data uh, that you just cannot get from any other form of interaction. That includes emotion, intent, urgency, confidence, and countless subtle cues that drive understanding uh, that no other single channel can really bring, it, bring together. So, for example, detecting customer hesitation in their voice can change how a sales conversation is handled, something a chat transcript cannot hold, uh, cannot pick up really just from the, uh, from the uh, actual text. And this is why we believe voice intelligence is the foundation for the next generation of agentic AI platforms. Uh, and that is why we're going all in on voice first approach to AI. Well, that's certainly good for Ring Central. You have a long-standing reputation for innovation in voice technology, and you recently launched Ring Central Air. And as you said, you're really doubling down on voice intelligence. Well, as you see, kind of the the modern workplace reshaping and people thinking like how they're kind of operating and, and communicating. What's your strategy for the AI-powered future of work? So AI power future of work is about, we think of, of um, work in terms of what happens during pre, during and post interactions. Think about it that way. Uh, we talked about leadership and voice, which we've had for more than two decades. Now we apply it uh, in the same f fashion to uh, all other channels, whether this is uh, a, a, our knowledge uh, what to do with how we do voice first and uh, how we interpret signals we apply to what works across voice also works across video to some extent uh, very well messaging and digital channels so we extract value from all forms of communication and our approach spans the entire customer interaction life cycle and that is really the secret sauce here in terms of understanding what happens before the customer interaction, what happens during, and then interpreting the post-interaction signals so that we can provide the best possible insights and intelligence at every step for both customers 
uh, and agents. And equally also between conversations uh, of employee to employee. So any that kind of form of interaction has these stages. And uh, this is really how we think Rim Central is uh, uniquely positioned to, to, to take advantage of that stream of um, rich data signals uh, that can enhance uh, and uh, improve and really ultimately drive much stronger outcomes, which we're already seeing with our customers. Yeah, and really that's key, right? Like every organization is just so eager to move beyond the hype and see that tangible business value. So can you share some examples of how Ring Central's customers are experiencing that real world impact? Of course. So 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 let me let me start with like we you know you just mentioned air and this is the latest product that we announced a couple of months ago that's ha having uh, a really good uh, seeing really good customer traction and it and it does that uh, when the products do well in the market when you just announce them usually because it has very uh, obvious ROI you sort of you, you you know you find what's called the product market fit so a good example of air which is a product that essentially is called a, uh, stands for AI receptionist, and it's in that form of pre, during, and post interaction. It's the pre um, interaction phase. Um, it takes calls on your behalf. It can provide simple guidelines as to if you're a small business, how to get to your office. Um, uh, it can help um, uh, answer uh, basic inquiries, and it does it all with very simplistic. Um, or simple, easy to use setup, uh, so that basically instead of having a human being answer these questions um, that are just you know there are many of them are routine such as um, you know what services do you offer, what business hours are you open during, um, and um, uh, you can have uh, a your digital employee do that. So example of that is uh, for example a company called Oven Security, which is a property and life safety solutions company. Uh, which is using air and seeing massive efficiency gains with air, saving each agent uh, something like two to four hours per day. I mean, that's huge. That's like, like a 50% increase, decrease um, in time spent on inbound calls. And so what it does is it allows them to focus more on outbound calls uh, and follow-ups without having to add uh, headcount. Um, another example would be integral recruiting, used to handle hundreds of calls monthly uh, many of them just being spam uh, or irrelevant, uh, where a human being would have to handle it. Now with AIR, they filter out irrelevant calls and focus on the 10% that actually matters and that brings customer value um, and creates real opportunities, real leads. At the end of the day, uh, all of this is really about either better lead creation or better uh, customer service. Uh, and uh, another good example would be um, NHS uh, Hertfordshire, it's actually a fairly well um, uh, known healthcare organization in UK with, uh, which services uh, over uh, a million residents. What they did was our AI powered contact center, which is I'm jumping now into sort of a, a, a different realm, uh, is uh, they've cut 30% of um, call wait times just because agents were better trained uh, on, the, on, on what they've how to handle customer inquiries. Uh, so even though the call gets to uh, an agent in this in, in this instance, um, in this example is this customer, which of course you know, we, we do want uh, many of the calls to go through because these are more complex inquiries uh, and require human touch points. We want them to be handled efficiently. We want them to be handled in a way that ultimately leads to better outcomes and happier customers. And here's a good example of how better training for agents, that uh, better AI enablement uh, with uh, AI for agents actually produces, uh, produces those, resu those results. So with producing results, I mean, I, I follow you on social media. I see a lot of the things that you talk about with, with AI and a adapting AI internally and your, of your own technology and also just AI in general, is sort of a, a strong indicator of a company's confidence in its own technology and the promise of AI efficiencies. So what are you and your teams using internally and what outcomes are you seeing just with the general use of AI and some of your own products as well? Look, I couldn't agree with you more. And um, if you were uh, here in, in Central at uh, 
uh, internal meetings, which operational meetings, you would hear me kind of get on my soapbox that every and, and and I've been I've been uh, on the soapbox for a while, but now I'm like really on it uh, because uh, also because the tools have matured, right? Uh, uh, and um, and our old and our old technology has matured. There's no there's no function in in Central, and I believe in any other company should be the same way that is not using AI to improve uh, the way that they work and uh, take out. Uh, redundant ta uh, or manual tasks or tasks that require a lot of redundant work um, and replace that uh, with um, technology that does it actually a lot better. Um, and for example, I talked about the previous customer that uh, has uh, improved call wait times uh, with Ring CX in our all own customer support center using our Ring CX, which is our contact center product. We're seeing something like 10 to 20 percent reduction in average handle times using our AI agent assist and AI supervisor assist technologies, which basically enable uh, us to do the following. It enables us to provide agents with um, help during the call so that they can answer questions more effectively, can understand uh, how to handle more complex inquiries that might have previously had to be turned over to specialists because they get help right there online when uh, they're talking to the customer proactively because the machine is listening uh, to the conversation. And um, with, in the same uh, fashion, the supervisor assist module helps supervisors monitor agents and proactively uh, manage those customer interactions. And, and that's huge because it also reduces, for example, things like agent fatigue um, and, and ultimately improves overall productivity uh, in, the, in the contact center. Uh, and uh, we'll know that happier employees make happier customers. Uh, in sales, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, sales, uh, sales and marketing. Um, well, look, marketing has been transformed, I believe, was uh, uh, was AI. And even though we're not necessarily ourselves uh, building marketing products, we're we're certainly consuming a lot of AI to create much better marketing content. Uh, and we're seeing something like 10x uh, productivity improvement in content creation, more effective campaigns, improved lead quality, uh, generating more qualified leads for fewer dollars. And these are all like real, real uh, examples of what we're living uh, through. And um, it's it's just uh, amazing to see the success of uh, technology and also the satisfaction that people get from using this technology because. You know, it simplifies a lot of sort of this, you know, redundant work of just, you know, oh my God, I've, I've created one piece of content, now I've got to create, you know, ten other pieces of content that look just the same, uh, with a little bit different, differently nuanced. Um, and then uh, to give you one more example uh, from uh, the, where AI plays a significant role is in uh, R and D in development of uh, uh, actual building uh, products and. Um, and both for engineering and product management. So for engineering, and we're still, I believe, early in the journey, we're seeing something like 20% productivity improvement from just using AI tools to accelerate development cycles and improve code quality. And those are just a few uh, examples of how we implement AI uh, throughout in Central. Well, then I think you are rightfully so on your soapbox. <laughs> These are these are all great examples, and I think you know you you talked so much about the power of voice. You know all of these things. In so many cases, it's the voice that comes out. You know when you can detect the fatigue and all of that. So as all of these sort of systems and they're capable of reasoning and action, these industry leaders are reimagining what's possible for unified communications. What do you see as kind of the future state for Ring Central in an agentic AI world? We're certainly charting that next evolution for Ring Central was uh, a human centered, meaningful AI approach that reflects how work actually gets done. And uh, organizations today can expect that voice of our support agents that understand customer sentiment and tone delivering significantly faster issue resolution with higher CSAT scores, for example, will do much better. And so 
part of our uh, journey in reimagining what happens next is that more of this increased AI supported human conversations or AI augmenting humans is how we really think that is what the future holds uh, for us. Uh, we're going to change the way we work. We're going to change the way sales conversations uh, take place. We're going to change the way we understand customer hesitations, intent, enthusiasm. Uh, we're going to be able to predict uh, customer needs uh, uh, and potential issues before they even get escalated. And for us, that agentic AI will become the underpinning of our strategy, and it has already has become that for addressing uh, voice first, but not only voice, uh, all channels, omni-channel, ac across a number of vertical in, uh, industries and role-based use cases, such as for sales, service, billing, et cetera. And it's very important that focus of having both the vertical industries and the roles is very important because with AI, you get so much um, uh, contextual information now that you can act on to improve the interactions that uh, the more you understand uh, the industry and the role, uh, the better it will become uh, in terms of the outcome that it can produce. And um, really, we think of, of our journey as uh, really helping humans make decisions, sometimes having decisions be made on their behalf, using these tools to reflect on actually what happened, learn, and again, help humans get better, um, and then really uh, turning agentic AI into something that's far closer to a teammate than a tool. And being very comfortable with it is key, and so, our job is to make our tools, our technology, our platform such that we enable people the way they want to work in this in this evolving future, uh, which we're all sort of living through. And th we've said that years ago, by the way, Mel, you know, when we started in Central, we used to say, um, well, this is when I joined in Central, we used to say we enable people to work the way they want to work. We're, I'm going to say the same thing, that we're going to enable people to work the way that they want to work, except that new way is going to be highly AI assisted. Yeah, well, it's definitely an exciting time to see changes and really be a part of that. And like I said, I you know I follow you on social. I see all of you know, the things that you put out there, and I can see that this is something that you're extremely passionate about. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us and for everybody who has tuned in. Thanks for joining us for this collaboration spotlight at the 65 Summit. Be sure to follow us on social and check out what's next at 65media.com slash summit. We'll be back with more insights shortly.